Okay, Hatboro Horse and what we worked on uh, at the last lesson. And uh, here it goes and then we'll break it down. It's just a little strum pattern to start off. And what that is, what I just did, is where in the song that we've been working on, or that we're going to be working on and have been, I'm, uh, it's in the key of A. It starts off in A, and I'm just holding my index finger as best as I can uh, till I get this operated on. Uh, I'm holding down strings two, three, and four, and um, hitting hitting the bass note of the A chord, and then strumming down on two. That'd be one two, and then I'm putting my uh, my uh, ring finger down on string two, fret three, and I'm, I'm pulling that off, this right, this, I'm putting it on this D note, and that's what you want to start thinking about, D note, that is the fourth, see, that's four sounds, fourth and, and I'm putting that down here and pulling that off to the third. And, and then following immediately with just strings three, four, and five as I'm holding the chords down and string five open. So it comes out strum. This is the pull off. Three, four, five, and then down to a D chord where I'm half barring strings at fret two, strings one, two, and three, and I put my ring finger down on string two, fret three, and I do the same thing, which is I put my, my pinky here on string one, and I pull that off to string one fret two, pull it off from the G to the D sharp. Once again, D, E, F sharp, G. G is the fourth, that's the suspended uh, note. That gives the suspended chord. And that oldest uh, guitar trick uh, in the book that everybody uses, that suspended fourth. And I do the same thing, pull that off, string one fret three to string one fret two, and then holding everybody, everything down the same, a D chord, play string two, which is at fret three, string three at fret two, and then string four, which is open. And then back up to the A, a strum, and then the pull off, string three, string four, and string five open. So here's bass note strum, pull off, and then down to string four. Excuse me, I'm having trouble with that. And that's how it starts. And then I just pointed out in class something that I'd, I'd like you to do uh, from now till forever, is that you want one of the, the key things of any song is the melody, and you want to learn how to start to pick that melody out on, on the guitar. So we know that he's, in, he's up here, he finished up on an A, and then as the sheet music of this, the lead sheet shows you, he goes to a D and And you'll notice that is, uh, I played it all on string three here for a little continuity, and they get used to just knowing what the notes are here. So we start off on the A at string three, fret two. He does, does that twice. April gave us flowers, string three, fret one. And then it 
goes to the A, but you see you have that G sharp in there, and it's actually you can get a really nice major seventh chord out of that. Or you can play it with an A, just to, but the, on, the, on your sheet it doesn't show an A major seven. And when you're taking a lead that we'll get into a few lessons down the road, uh, how to throw that in there because this G sharp is not part of the, is not part of the A major pentatonic scale, which is the first, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth, and then a repeat. So. Um, but yet this sounds nice and you can use it uh, to augment the uh, major pentatonic scale if you take some leads on this all in good time so um, anyway we have uh, just this alternation back uh, strumming later. Now the only other thing I have for this section for you is when it gets to the, the famous uh, or the well-known tag on that, uh, which is, uh, I got pieces of April. And that's, I'm playing that differently than what the lead sheet uh, shows you there. It says, it says to go to a D. I hear that organized around this B minor seventh, which you've encountered in a few songs now, the, where it goes from an A to a B minor. So I, I, I play this, uh, James Taylor does this a lot, and uh, that is you make a B minor seventh chord here, and the B is on string five fret two. New people, old people, you should all verify this on your guitar, say, yeah, it's an A, A sharp, B, that's right. String five fret two, that's a B, so that's my bass. And if I go from string one up, let's check, a B minor seventh should have a B, a D, an F sharp, and an A. So let's see if it has that. You have string one at fret two, that's an F sharp. Okay, checks. String two fret three, that's a D, which I certainly hope you know at this point. Uh, that's a D, so that checks. String three open or excuse me, not open, but held down here at the, this bar, and, and that's an A. So uh, you have B minor seventh would be a B, a D, an F sharp, and an A, because the seventh is only one whole step back or two, two steps back from the root note, and the root note is B, two steps back is B flat A. So, okay, that checks. And then string four, fret four, that's an F sharp, that checks. And the B bass, that checks. So you have a B minor seventh here. So it goes, I got pieces of April. And so I'm using the bass there. And then it goes to an E, or, you know, as, as you see, it goes to an E. And it goes to this really nicely voiced E right up here. And this E winds up to be an E seventh with suspended, with a, a, a nice little suspension in it that takes you back to the, to the, um, uh, back to the A. Uh, so let's look at that chord for a second. It's an E chord, so the chord triad is an E, a G sharp, and a B. And if it's a seventh chord, then once again from the E, E flat D, there, there should be a D in it. So you already had that answer. I'm making the very same chord that I did here for a B minor seventh. And now we have an E in the bass. So what does that make? Well, string one, once again, nothing's moved. We have an F sharp. Okay, that's an E, that's a ninth. That's nice. So we have a ninth here, then we have a, on string two, fret three, we have a seventh, and that, you know, 
That should be a familiar uh, formation for you. I always tell you, look for formations. Yeah, that's a, a real bluesy formation, the train whistle move there. Uh, and then you have a string three at fret two. Well, that's an A. Okay, that's the E, F sharp, G sharp, A. That's the fourth. Oh, that's the suspended one, right? Same as down here. Same as that G is and a D. Well, we have an A that's suspended for this E chord that we're playing. And then you come up here, string four, fret four. That's an F sharp. Okay, that's the ninth again, as you would expect. See, these are, there's an F sharp here. Here's an F sharp here. Just as you would expect, you know, three strings down and two back. So you have that, and then you have a B. Okay, e, that's the fifth, E, G sharp, and B. And then you have E in the bass. So you have this really pretty, very pretty voiced voicing in that chord. As I said, James Taylor uses that a lot. And then it resolves to back to that A. So this is a fifth resolving back to the A. So anyway, for that portion, just try that that fingering and that uh, and that voicing, and it goes. I got pieces of paper. See, there's the B. I'm gonna get that, and then painfully put these fingers down, and then. It's a morning in May. So uh, just give that a try, give the intro a try, and now we're gonna get down in the next video to uh, a, just uh, two locations where we're gonna play the very same, essentially very same um, lead. Okay, I'll see you there.